Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Sarkis Church. I wish everyone happy Valentine's Day. St. Valentine was a priest in the early church, and he loved God so much that when time came for him to be killed for his faith, he had no problem. He died for his faith. This is, this is all we know about this man who died for his, for his uh, faith. But we make his feast into a big celebration in our culture, and we do all the festivities, which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing, as long as we are celebrating love. But today, I will not be speaking about Valentine's. I will not be speaking about love. But I'll be speaking about a feast that we are observing today in the Armenian church. Today, we are celebrating the feast of the presentation of the Lord to the temple. In Armenian, this is known as Diyarun Tarach. And for this reason, we are doing something extraordinary. If you were here today, and this was not February 14, the Feast of Presentation, during the season of Lent, you will find the curtain closed and the liturgy different. But today, this is an exception because of this feast. What are we celebrating today? Now, as Armenians, we celebrated Christmas on January 6, 40 days after that, it will bring us to February 14th, and today we celebrate the day when Jesus was brought to temple, to the temple of Jerusalem, to observe the law that was given to the people of Israel. Now, for those who are familiar with the Hebrew scripture, they know that in the book of Leviticus, there's a specific law that has to do with childbirth. It is written in chapter 12 of the book of Leviticus that every firstborn should be taken to the temple to be dedicated to the Lord so that that child, that firstborn child, would be holy. And Joseph and Mary, being observant Jewish people, they took their firstborn child, Jesus, to the temple. And the law is very simple. You have to make a little offering and dedicate your child to be a child of the temple and a child of God. Everything in this story is pretty simple. There's nothing extraordinary in this story, in this observation. The way that they took Jesus to the temple, the way that they said their rituals and the prayers. But what is extraordinary in this whole story is that when they went to the temple and they did whatever the law asked them to do, and after finishing the rituals, there was an old man in the temple. His name was Simon. And Simon was a devout person praying to God. And when he saw baby Jesus, he took him in his arms and he thanked God. And he said, today I have seen the salvation that you have promised to your people. Mary and Joseph, who saw this, could not understand what was happening. Today, I will not be talking about the presentation, the rituals, but I will be talking about this man, Simon, and the words that he said. I was reading lately about a person who, who, was, who asked questions to people, where do you find God? And... One of the answers that he received was pretty fascinating. An elderly person answering to his question, he said, I recently just had two grandchildren. And when I look to the face of my grandchildren, I cannot do anything but think about love and think about God. Looking at the face of children made the guy think about God. When we think about 
the story of Jesus' presentation to the temple, which, by the way, we read about it in the Gospel of Luke, we think that this is something that happened centuries ago. Why we keep talking about it. But in reality, this is something that happens to us every day. When we try to see God in his creation, in the faces of people around us. Because the essence of our faith as Christians, we believe that God meets with us wherever we are. Sometimes we have this notion that we are unworthy. We are bad people. Therefore, God has nothing to do with us. We feel like hypocrites trying to pray because as honest people, we come to acknowledge that we are sinners. And naturally, we question why would God has to do anything with, with a sinner like me? But when we read the gospel, and when we look at what Jesus did, we come to understand that Jesus met people around him right wherever they were. He met the sinners. He spoke with regular people. He did not ask them to change and then to come to him. He met them in the condition that they were in. But after that encounter, he asked them to change and to become better people. In the same way, God is inviting us to have a relationship with him. And one of the best ways to kind of, for us to imagine the reality of this invitation is to take a look to the paintings of the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican. I've been there, it's fascinating. All the paintings in the walls. But what fascinates me the most is that hand of God painting. It's very interesting. The way that the painter imagined God with the angels approaching Adam, stretching out his hand. And you see Adam, and he has no clothes on him, by the way. Laid back, very relaxed. He's thinking about, should I raise my hand or should I just keep the way that I am? By the way, for Adam as a gardener, he's very well built. This tells us that if we, if we work in the garden, we can exercise and we will have big muscles. But when we look and examine that painting, we will see that God cares more about that relationship than Adam does. He's very comfortable. You see, God is more concerned about having that relationship. And that tells us that if we only open ourselves, we will see the God of hand there, stretching out and inviting us to have a relationship with him. Where do we find God? God is everywhere. This, this man, Simon, was able to find God in the face of baby Jesus. We can find God everywhere. God is found in the, on the faces of people around us. God is found in the nature. I can give an example from my own life. When I was a seminarian, I... I went through a period of uncertainty. I didn't know what to do with my life. And I didn't have good guidance, unfortunately. But our seminary was located on the top of a mountain in Lebanon, overseeing the Mediterranean Sea. And every night, I would watch the sunset, which was breathtaking, amazing. And I would feel the presence of God. I would feel that I was not alone and that the creator of the heavens and the earth had a plan for me. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, I encourage you to open the blinds of your hearts 
Open your spiritual eyes and seek the presence of God. Because once we have a relationship with him, we'll see that life is meaningful. Life is full of blessings. May God bless you all now and forever. Amen.